Now, from Into Tomorrow, this is an ITTV special report. Intel is investing a whole lot of effort into developing technology to support a line of Ultrabook laptops. Yes, Ultrabooks. We're hearing all kinds of cool names. This particular group, if you will, of PCs, of the portability and travel and so forth is awesome and getting a lot of buzz here at the Intel Developer Forum. The director for Ultrabook Marketing Strategy with the Intel PC Client Group at Intel, cleverly enough, is Karen Regis. Karen, welcome back into tomorrow. It's been a while. How are you? It's, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me back. It's been years. Yes, it has been. Uh, long before we were thinking up Ultrabooks. Long, you, yeah. Yeah, you were working on other projects that were cool and fun at the time, but this is something that's got to have you really pumped. It's it, getting a lot of attention. It is. It's, it's, um, I think it's something that the market is really going to um, be ready for. The reaction that we're getting here at the forum has been just amazing. Our booth, we have an Ultrabook stand where we're showing not just technology that's going to be available on market for this um, holiday season this year, but also technology based on our Ivy Bridge processor, which is coming out next year. Ah. So a whole range of really cool um, devices um, over there that people can go and check out. First of all, what can you tell us real quick about Ivy Bridge? Because it's one of those words we're hearing and it's being bantered about, and I want our audience to know what to look forward to. <laughs> oh my gosh, well, I could dazzle you with code names, but I'll try not to. Okay. Um, Ivy Bridge is going to be our third generation Intel Core processor family. It's the processor, and in the mobile space, it is part of the Chief River platform. So the platform is defined by the chipset. Mm -hmm. So our Panther Point, Ivy Bridge goes on that, and we call the platform um, Chief River. Um, this is you know, a compaction onto our latest 22 nanometer process technology. Uh, we're really excited about that. Um, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be a little bit more than a normal compaction. You're going to see a lot more goodies out of it than uh, you would normally see gen over gen for a compaction. And it's fun that you mentioned the 22 nanometers because I had this stat I haven't been able to use the whole show yet I want to share. <laughs> if, it, if a typical house, uh, uh, no, let me see. How small is 22 nanometers? If a typical house uh, trunk as friends, what? <laughs> I'm trying to read something that I actually cut and pasted, and it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, to suggest that 22 <laughs> nanometers is very, very tiny uh, is is a major understatement. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. I, I mean, I've been in this industry a long time. I remember when we were talking about our fab tech process technology in terms of um, microns and not nanometers, and that was a big transition when we finally got small enough, we had to go to nanometers, and now 22 nanometers? Oh my gosh, we're going to have another term I'm going to have to use after yes. that? Yes, oh my <laughs> gosh, is right. But now, back to the Ultrabook. You talk about the excitement here and the buzz being created at IDF, and we just find out that you were in the hall next to us at IFA, and uh, three more initials starting with I, uh, in Berlin. <laughs> Berlin yeah. just last week, and it's like, how could we have missed you? But I'm glad we caught up with you now yeah. because that was a major buzz over there as well. We had three OEMs making major announcements that week um, about their Ultrabook plans. So we had uh, Toshiba announcing their product plans. Um, Acer came out with their announcement, and then Lenovo as well, all centered around IFA. And of course, ASUS had already been out with um, some detail around their plans around their UX series. Mm. Um, so yeah, really cool stuff. A lot of buzz coming out of Intel, um, you know, here talking about it at the developer forum, but also our OEM partners are really excited about this as well. And they've, I mean, they've done gorgeous, oh, gorgeous yeah. designs. Uh, for, for those uh, listening on the radio, when you get a chance, come by and see the video. I mean, ch check out this Toshiba Ultrabook that is so thin, it's so light. I'm thinking this has got to be a demo machine or something, that it's, that it's fake. Uh, it's really unbelievable. You know, we hear, of course, uh, netbooks, notebooks, laptops, I mean, the whole bit. Now, Ultrabooks, what defines an Ultrabook, first of all? Well, the first thing you notice, of course, is it's the very thin and light. This one is sub-17 millimeters um, thick. It's a 13-inch screen. Um, but Ultrabook goes way beyond thin and light. It adds in some of the capabilities that people are expecting on their PCs based on their experience on other devices. Near instant on capability. You want to get to a low power state and then come very back quickly to a, a productive state. Well, then um, does that suggest uh, solid state drives as, are part of Ultrabooks, or is that you may have drives. some or not? Right. So w what we're defining is the experience of wake from the hibernate state, which is near zero power. 
um, because we want to have long, long, you know, standby life. If so, if you aren't active on your PC, you can go into a zero power state, and the battery can last for weeks rather than days. Um, we want it to wake quickly um, from that state so that it's more like sleep, which is actually drawing power because you're having to leave power onto the DDR and other some, uh, some other subsystems. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, you do need some NAND. It doesn't have to be an SSD. This one happens to be using an SSD drive. However, you can use a combination of a mechanical drive, a thin mechanical drive, um, coupled with a, a small NAND cache that can, that can take care of storing uh, the memory data so you can get quickly back to your active state. Wow. Uh, and, and what manufacturers are, are coming out with Ultrabooks and how soon? Uh, well, Muli Eden in his keynote this morning talked about the four that I just mentioned, Acer, mm -hmm. Asus, Lenovo, and Toshiba. And he also um, had something on there about LG and Samsung. So there are, I don't know everyone's schedule exactly. Suffice it to say that we are going to have um, about five to seven players in the market in the second half. I don't know how many of them will actually hit your shopping schedules. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, there's uh, going to be a, a, a great start to building this new Ultrabook category um, from a number of players in the market this holiday season. No doubt the smarter companies are certainly going to be coming out with Ultrabooks, and the sooner the better. The holiday season is a perfect opportunity to get something. I mean, you won't even know it's in your backpack because it is so light. It's amazing. I think I'll put a bow on this one and keep it for myself. Uh, I think you should, <laughs> especially because you're the director of Ultrabook Marketing Strategy, and you're strategically marketing very well. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, thanks so much for spending a couple of minutes with us and helping us kick this hour off of, of the broadcast. So much excitement, and let's stay in touch because, of course, there's more to talk about. And as Ultrabooks are actually out and on the market, we want to learn more. Okay, happy to come back anytime. Terrific. And, of course, intel.com for more, and you'll see what Karen and her team are up to. Be sure to hit us up at your leisure to see the videos of all the interviews here from IDF and, of course, our highlight videos and lots of other fun stuff, intotomorrow.com. I'm Dave Graveline. We're back in San Francisco with more from the Intel Developer Forum right after this on the Advanced Media Network.